This is Stephen Goldstein here. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about fascial therapy. I'm going to teach you how to use uh, a greater uh, variety of applications to work with the very malleable form of myofascia. Um, the class will be very practical oriented, um, a lot of hands-on time. So how did you find uh, my workshop? What helped change uh, your practice and what ways? If it's not the technique, it's the concept that a lighter touch can have mm. a more profound and more global effect on a body than anything hard as opposed to pushing through tight tissue. Go eyes to the treatment, so I'm still, I still look, I combine the two at the moment. What I do is I still look at things from a bio biomechanical model and still look at patterns and functional abilities and you know, uh, differences between left and right, these sorts of things, abnormalities, asymmetries, and then I apply, I see how your techniques and your assessment fit with it and then I'll throw your techniques with mine, probably more yours first, and see that they actually change the things that I would normally change biomechanically because it's the biomechanical model anyway, but it does it before I need to do it. Right. Cool. Yeah, okay. So what I was looking to achieve is to be able to maintain like a squat position. So it would be, I need to have my weight centered on the middle of my heel and also maintain two points of contact here. So what I had trouble with, I could only get to about here. So from a squatting perspective, I do like to have a knees out approach. Um, and now you can see that I can quite op easily open that up. So, and improve my dorsiflexion, I don't have any patellar tendonitis issue. If I had pain pushing that forward, now all I feel is my vastus medialis contracting. And, um, how, and how long did that occur? Oh, I've torn that four years ago. And I, I haven't been able to control this foot 10 years. I could 10 years, and we just did that on the table now. Just did that. Understand that. So we'll integrate that in day one. In day two, uh, we'll switch more to indirect methods. Okay, it eases holding it up. Could you drop your shoulder blades? That's it. And now compression is becoming ease. So I'm going to just put a light compression on the shoulder. Yeah, there we go. And because of the subluxation, I'm going to not do this move. Moving into day threes and four, we move then up into using more levering. Uh, working with joints and using compression and tension with also active, resistive, or contract, relax. What's going to happen is he's sort of an angle now. So where we're like this, see, I'm going to get him on the angle. I'm going to support him here. I'm going to hold him back, and he's going to give me a serratus sort of push, straight arm. Yeah, release. You okay? Can I move your scalp? Yep. There's the clip. You hear it? Yep. Now it'll go up. There we go. As we move through the shoulder complex, we also will do the thorax, and then we'll sort of double back down on day four to the pelvis. Feel a little bit more organ before you feel muscle there, and you come off again very quickly. The rebound is what is the release, because the organ is off its adhesion. Remember, these organs are glued with forms of connective tissue fascia as well. So I may do the light. The palm is going to be the one that's doing most of the work. The fingers are just hanging. Ever so slightly, sure enough, yeah, just to get some movement. So you usually come out of that experience with uh, a, a dramatic change in your thought process, uh, your clinical reasoning, and of course, you'll have techniques that you can utilize immediately into your practice.